Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today I am in the middle of my very first service on this 1985 square body K10 that we recently restored basically completely. Last week I drove it for the very first time. I drove it off and on all week and I am in the process of draining out the uh, engine break-in oil and I found some things that I don't like. I don't like it all and I'll let you be the judge whether it's really bad or not and I'll show you in just a second. Also, I found out why my four-wheel drive wasn't working. I mentioned in the, at the end of last week's video that it wasn't engaging, and it wasn't. And I found out why. It wasn't near as simple as what I was hoping, so you know, I'll share that with you as well. But thanks for watching, guys, and uh, let me show you, you know, what I found. So I've been told that, uh, you know, when life gives you lemons, I believe you just stomp the daylights out until some juice comes out or something like that, really. And that's what I'm trying to do here, because this is a problem that I wasn't expecting. Now, last week I mentioned, if you watched the video, that my four-wheel drive wasn't working on this truck, and all I was getting out of the front end was some popping noises, which is never a good sign. I, having rebuilt this entire axle from one side to the other, thought it had to be the hubs, because those are frequent to go bad, and it's the one part on this whole front axle that I didn't replace. Well, come to find out, I jacked this thing up, I grabbed the wheel, and I spin it. The hub, or the axle, is spinning, so the hub is actually working, and it's popping down in the diff housing, which is never a good thing, uh, usually. And uh, let me show you what I found you know, to be the problem. I'm a bit surprised that this happened, but it did. So when I rebuilt the axles on this truck, I upgraded from 28 spline axles to 30 spline axles. Now you wouldn't think there'd be that big a difference in just two splines, but there really is. And I'll show you the difference up close here in just a second. But my problem with this truck and this front axle was when I bought my parts, somebody by mistake put a 28 spline axle in a box that should have contained a 30 spline axle. And my axle was simply just slipping in the differential because it didn't didn't properly made up. So, at least it's on the front of this truck and it's not hard at all to change. Let me get you in a little closer and I'll show you the difference in these two because it's surprisingly a surprisingly large amount for just two splines. So I don't know how well this shows on camera, but there is a substantial difference in between the 30 spline in diameter, 30 spline, and the 28 spline. You can see the 28 spline has a step down in the axle diameter. And when these axles break, they normally break at the end of their engagement where they slide into their mating gear or at the end of the spline or something like that. So having that extra diameter on an axle that's not necessarily known for you know, being the most durable in the world can make the difference in between it surviving or not, especially if you put bigger tires on your truck and you don't want to go through the extra expense or trouble of changing out your axles and tire units uh, for something more heavy duty or more durable. So we upgraded to 30 spline. I just happened to get a 28 spline axle thrown in the mix. So now that I know what the problem is, all I got to do is transfer this end yoke onto this new axle and then stick it all together. So let's go over to the press. Let's press out one side of this U-joint and then press it in to this new axle. All right, so I've got two C-clips that i got to get off this U-joint and I'm just going to hammer the screwdriver just lightly in there to hold one side of the C-clip. And I'm going to wrap this rag around this side because those C-clamps, little clips are made, known for shooting off into infinity. Then I'm going to carefully hit the other side with a hammer and hopefully it'll just pop right off. That's... And it did. So I got lucky. Well, it partially popped off. Two of those. What is it, girl? What are you barking at? You barking at me? Hello. Hello, Cora.
I need to make a new end for this press, one that is flatter. This thing's all beat up on the end. And that makes pressing stuff out straight not so easy. Sometimes it's easier, you know, if you're just doing this by yourself, to use a ball joint press. Like, like this. But, you know, it can be done both ways. If you don't have a huge press at home, you know, you can pick up one of these. This is actually from Harbor Freight. Actually, it's great when it's the Maddox brand. Just enough room to get those clips in. What are you doing, girl? So after an absolute battle installing this axle, I finally got it. Three plus hours I've sat here and messed with this axle trying to get it to spline up in the differential. <laughs> Even when things are perfect, right, you didn't run a 28 spline axle and a 30 spline differential and maybe get some burrs on there. Even when things are perfect, I've had trouble installing these because they're so long. Right by the time they're way out there at the end, it's hard to keep them lined up. And even when it starts to spline up in the differential, when the axle starts to try to engage in those splines, then you have to deal with the knuckle or the joint here barely fitting through this knuckle. So tight you have to tap it through. So it progressed. I turned the camera off because it was the best thing to do. Uh, even Elizabeth came out here and tried to help me. And, you know, I just gave up, went 
inside, went to bed, slept on it, come back out here, try it again, and I was two seconds away from pulling the differential out of this thing just to make sure that it, something's not crazy wrong. Yes, the force did progress, you know. I'm not going to tell you the method that I used to get this thing installed. But I'll just say that my levels of force increased until it worked. I'm happy with the way it went in, but man, I fought, I fought it. That's for sure. I earned that one. Cora, get down. Oh, Cora, go on. You're making me make a mess. Go on, go lay down. So now to the part of the engine, really the, the most important part. I'm pretty sure I got my axle all wrapped up and I don't think I'm gonna have any more trouble with that. Now, up until now, I've been running brake-in oil in this thing. I've driven this truck about 300 miles. Last week, I mentioned that I had a small oil leak at the back of the intake and I decided since I you know, got an oil leak, I might as well fix that and change the, do the first oil change on this you know, while I'm at it, pulling the intake, you know, got to scrape the gaskets and make a mess. Might as well change the oil. I believe I'm good as far as my ring seat and all that. And really with this engine, that's all I'm worried about. I've got a roller cam and, you know, nothing else really concerns me. So should be pretty good. Um, now, because I have to pull the intake on this, that means on this engine, I had to pull the distributor as well, which is a good thing. Let me show you what I found. 
uh, in regards to the distributor. And then I'll show you what I found in regards to the oil that come out of this thing. I'll show you, I cut the oil filter open. I wanna show you what I found. So here's my distributor that I pulled out of this thing. It's just a, a standard HEI distributor. Actually, it's an aftermarket uh, Excel, Excel distributor. Now, when I built this engine, I contacted the cam manufacturer. Now, I didn't buy all of these parts individually. I bought them as a kit, right? Or not a kit. I bought them as a lot of components that a friend of mine kind of assembled together. I called the cam manufacturer and I asked them what cam gear or what distributor gear I should run you know, with the cam that's in this engine. They told me to run a melanized gear. So what I did is I went online and I, for the life of me, I cannot find where I purchased this thing. And I assumed that I bought a melanized gear because they offer several different types of gears you can get the standard i think it's just a cast gear um, you can get a, a bronze gear or you can get a melanized gear and it just depends on the 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 steel goodness i can't even speak the steel that your camshaft's made of right i'm no expert on it but it's something to do with compatibility right so here is the cam gear that I pulled out of this engine just now. This is a replacement melanized gear from comp cams that I bought because this gear that I put in it is obviously not a melanized gear, or it must not be because I've got some pretty good wear starting on this thing. So let me get you in a closer shot and, you, and you'll see what I mean. It's not good. So there's your close-up of both gears. Now, you learn a lot, if you're not an expert, when you do an engine build, like gears, compatibility with different types of camshafts and different materials, even gear bore size. This distributor takes a 0 .491, I think, diameter hole in the gear. Some of them take a half inch hole, right? You gotta be sure of that, and you gotta get your compatibility right, or, you'll wind up having things like this happen. See that wear on those gear teeth? It's not excessive, but there's not a lot of miles on this thing. It really wouldn't have lasted that long and potentially could have caused damage to the uh, camshaft in this engine. Now, did it? You know, I don't know. I looked down in there and from what I see, it looks good. It looks like this took, this gear took the majority of the wear. So I went online and I bought a melanized gear from a reputable manufacturer because when I originally bought a gear, this gear, I looked for the cheapest melanized gear on the planet and probably got something that uh, said it was melanized when it really wasn't or, it, you know, where it come from probably. This one come from comp cams. So I'm certain that this is a melanized gear and hopefully this will stop my wear problems with my cam gear or with my distributor gear in regards to you know, the distributor, the camshaft, and all that stuff. So that is a problem that I'm glad I caught. Hopefully, I didn't do any damage to the camshaft. But we'll see after we run this gear for a while. So because this is my very first oil change on this brand new engine, I wanted to cut the oil filter apart and see what any so see if any surprises are in there. Now, when I pulled the drain plug out on this thing, it has a small neodymium magnet on it. It had some black goo on it, but you know, nothing, no chunks. There was no rod bearings connected to them or no nuts and bolts, you know, connected to that magnet. So that's a good thing. I do have quite a bit of black goo, just debris in this filter, but I'm assuming the majority of this is probably from the wear that uh, I was getting on that cam gear. So let me show you what I found by cutting open the very first oil filter from this brand new engine. So you can see there is some goo in there, just a fine, layer of, uh, I don't know, probably piston rings and distributor gears and all sorts of little fine pieces of engine components in there, but nothing excessive. There's no chunks or anything. A couple little pieces of silicone and you know, maybe a gasket material and something like that. But nothing super surprising. I separated the pleats. You know, that's some... Uh, lithium grease, right, from the assembly, but no real chunks of any sort. There was a couple little pieces that I found on here, little hair-like uh, pieces of metal, probably from that uh, distributor gear, but, uh, you know, nothing major, right? 
no uh, rod caps in there. So I got my distributor drop back down in. I put some extreme pressure lube on the gear, the new gear. So hopefully that will, you know, help this thing, you know, seat in and I don't have any 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 more wear there. 1843672 and clockwise rotation is the direction of the distributor on here. Now that firing order that I just mentioned, <laughs> I remember that simply because it's one of the most common engines, or used to be, that uh, people worked on. This one, small block, and uh, you know, used to we used to remember people's phone numbers and stuff. And it's kind of, you know, similar. Now you got a pocket computer device that does that for you. But still, you know, that's something that you just, yeah, I don't know. Once you have to find out the firing order seventeen hundred times, you eventually remember it, and you've, you know, a lot of times never forget it. So years ago, me and my brother, we rebuilt a big block. It's 454 and an extended cab dually Chevy pickup he had. And, uh, you know, you always see people tape up the intake. They pull off, you know, pull off the carburetor or whatnot so stuff doesn't get dropped down in there. Well, I don't know which one of us, one or me, either me or him, dropped a small, like a little panhead screw down in the intake. And uh, we started that thing up and it knocked like crazy and we were like oh man you know what in the world is went going on and we narrowed down which cylinder it was coming from pulled the head off and it had just it dropped in immediately embedded itself just in the top of the piston and never moved so all we did was get a pair of pliers we removed that uh, that screw and it i think i think it's actually still running that's been years and years ago but it happens, so if you pull something down like this, uh, don't do like I did. You know, put you some tape over the intake because it is super easy to drop something down in there. I'm not even for sure where that little screw that got in my brother's engine, where it even come from. But it happens. All right, I guess it's time to try to start this thing. So I've got the vacuum advance unhooked from the carburetor. That's what I'm going to use to set the initial timing. So it's unhooked. I have got, let's see, the plug for that carburetor port. I'm just going over a checklist in my head. Got the port that uh, usually accommodates the vacuum advance on the carburetor plug so I don't have a vacuum leak. Yep, timing light's hooked up. Got oil in it. What else? I guess that's it, right? So let's try this thing. And, uh, you know, see if it'll start. It should. I don't see why it wouldn't, but you never know. Yeah, about 12 degrees of timing. Oh, got a water leak. Okay, well, at least it fired right up. A little water leak at the, at the spout there, right at the top water radiator hose, and I gotta lock down the distributor. Lock it down there for now. And I don't know. It's getting towards the end. 
so I didn't show the engine oil that I put in this thing. What I'm running is about as cheap as engine oil as I could possibly find. Just a uh, 10W30, you could use probably a straight 30 would be fine. But I'm using a 10W30 uh, from O'Reilly's. Just non-synthetic because, you know, I don't think it's the best idea to run an awesome oil in a brand new engine because you actually do want them to wear in some. And the only reason I've changed the oil this early and got that braking oil out of it is because, you know, I'm working on it anyway. And might as well get that, uh, get what little metal debris that was in it out of it. You know, not a bad idea. So, went back with a cheap oil for, you know, break-in reasons. So when I built this engine, I knew I was going to have issues with my plug wires and the headers because they're super close here. I mean, yeah, you can put regular, if you, you run super high quality wires on them, you get the right setup, 90 degree boots or, or whatever, depending on, you know, your location, they'll, they'll last, but they won't last near as long as these ceramic boots on here. Now, these are not super high quality boots. These are, uh, you know, your regular old off the boat uh, boots, dragon fire, wire, breath, I'm not for sure, dragon something, they've got a dragon on them. And uh, they were great. They fit great. You know, so far so good. Uh, none of them were broke. Um, you know, I can't uh, can't say I regret buying those at all. I like them. So, Elizabeth's here. She's going to go with us. And Mr. Bob's is here. He's going to go with us as well on our test drive. And we'll see how this thing runs. And we will uh, test the four-wheel drive. Because I haven't, I haven't got to do that. But it should work now. So let's... Go on a test drive. I have to move my car. Think so? Probably. I got my keys. You ready to go for a ride, Bobby? Like a mini trick, Bob? She's like, yeah, shoot. Sure.
truck, which is a good thing. A little bit of oil burning off the manifolds. So just made it back to the shop. Everything seems to be okay, I guess. Me and Elizabeth and Mr. Bob's took probably a 30 minute drive, I'm guessing. 30, 45 minute drive, probably 20 plus miles or so. I, I don't know. We drove a while. Tested the front axle, works good now. Um, and ever so often, I'm gonna just engage the front axle and drive it in front wheel drive till I you know, get a few miles on this front axle and get it kind of wore in because it's new as well. Ring and pinion, all of it's all new. We'll also, the uh, next time we get a good wet spell, we'll test the four wheel drive out on this thing. I'm really curious uh, to get this thing on a slippery wet hillside and try both front and rear. These are all Yukon uh, gear and axle parts in here. So we've got the Duragrip uh, differentials, locking diffs in both the front and the rear. So this thing should go like a stuck hog. Um, so far, so good. What is that? Oh, it's the finish line on this project. It is so close, I can see it. It's right there. In fact, it's pretty much in the back of the truck, and that is the carpet for this thing. A couple weeks ago, my brother ordered the carpet for this truck, and I want to share with you guys putting that in, because that's one of the last big steps that I've got to do, basically, other than a headliner is not, not that big a deal. So I want to share with you guys sticking the carpet in this thing and get you a very good look at this truck 
pretty much in its completed state after you know complete rebuild. I am very happy to be calling this project done. Even though I thoroughly enjoyed it, it has been a huge task to take this truck from what it was, which was a piece of garbage, and turn it into what it is, which is a very nice pickup truck now. I'd much rather build a building than have to restore a vehicle. There's just so many more parts to a vehicle. Although it's fun, it's a lot of work. So let's get the carpet in this thing and then we'll get a really good look at it and uh, you know, see what it looks like pretty much complete. So what I want you to do, Kane, is just hold on to this and uh, and just don't let it hit scratch. Try not to let it scratch the truck, right? And I'll get in there and I'll walk through, right? And we'll just take it outside and set it down. Uh, you want to go. So in order to get all the shipping wrinkles out of this thing, because it's rolled up and put in a box, uh, I've let this be unrolled for a couple days, got it sitting in the back of the truck, letting the sun shine on it to soften it up a bit. Because if this stuff is cool, man, it, it's pretty stiff. So this definitely helps. Feels pretty good now, and I think I'm ready to shove this thing in the truck. So in this carpet, they've got little squares pressed here for the seat belts, here for the back of the seat. You can see we've got our spots there. So if we can just put a hole in the center of that, put a bolt in that, bolt in that, do the same on the other side, this carpet should be basically where it needs to be as far as, and that's looking about right, as far as front to back. And it's lining up our humps here. Looks like our, you know, moldings lining up there, or the hump. So I think, as far as front to back, we've got this stuff pretty well lined up, I think. Close, anyway. Thank you. 
All right, so I got the back of the carpet, carpet lined up. It's centered. It's about where it's going to be. And you can't expect it to lay perfectly flat. It's just a molded in the general shape of your floor. But I've got all of the humps that are pressed into this carpet are you know, pretty much where they should be. We've got our seat belt bolts in and our seat belt seat bolts in. And now where most people mess up and we're, you know, if I'm going to mess up, it'll probably be, you know, where the... Uh, where the shifters come through. Once I got my shifter locations and I'm happy with it, then you can go up under there and it's a little longer than what it needs to be, or at least this one is. And I can go around and I can trim, you know, and get this to stuff up in there and kind of disappear. It's, the, it's kind of the plan. Make it to where it, uh, you know, is not, uh, not showing. So when I picked up carpet for this truck, I just ordered the whole the set, right? We got the floor carpet. I got the bottom, they're called door cards, I think. Bottom door cards. I got the little carpeted inserts for the kick panels. And it also came with the carpet for the, for the back. This is kind of an option, but it's really nice. 
makes it finishes them out. Um, it just actually you could leave it like this and not glue it. But I'm gonna spray a little glue on there so it fits a little tighter. But it just velcros. It's got a strip of velcro at the top. You can put it behind your panels paneling if you have it, or if you don't, you know you can just stick it up there. And actually, you know, it looks pretty good. Kind of finishes them out. I think I think I like it. Right? I could do with or without it, but uh, you know, not bad, not bad. So it's never just one thing that finishes out a vehicle. It's all of the, you know, vehicle or anything. Shop, right? Your music room, your kitchen, whatever. Whatever project you're working on. It's all the little things that make them finished. You know, all the, all the details. So I think the carpet looks good. It actually, it actually fit pretty well. You know, I got a couple little humps and bumps that I'm hoping will settle out over time. And it should, but... Uh, Overall, I am very pleased with the way that it went in. It took a little time. You know, it's not something you're gonna do in 15 minutes, but, uh, you know, new carpet's nice. So now if I can just keep it nice, that'll be the thing. Let me show you the doors, right? We'll look at those really quick. My brother did this. He did some custom work and I appreciate it to match my seats. So let me show you that and then, uh, you know, show you the carpet and that's it, right? We're done. So check out that little bit of custom work there. That was done by my brother. He took some material that matched, matches my seat, took it and used it to cover these inserts that go in the door panels. He even stitched uh, the stitching in there, you know, just like it was from the factory. So check that out. So nice. Carpet fit, you know, about as good as I guess you could ask. And the interior of this truck, other than gauges, which is just a detail, pretty much done. Well, it's a little breezy out here. Pulled the truck out so we can get a look at it, you know, in its entirety. This is a year's worth of weekends and afternoons to go from a fence row pickup truck to what you see here, which is a basically new 1985 Chevy short bed, four wheel drive pickup truck. The truck of my dreams, actually. You know, everybody's got that. Yours may be a Ford, Dodge, whatever flavor, Toyota. Mine was this. Growing up, like I mentioned, my brothers and my dad still drives them, uh, and it was the truck to have, or it was the truck that the people that I looked up to had. So, you know, in my mind, this is what a truck is. So I am so glad that I went off on this tangent and, you know, went through all of the work, and it was a monumental amount of work to bring this thing back, basically, from the dead. So it looks, it looks amazing. It really does. Now, and I'm so... And I'm so glad that I got to share it with you guys just to show, you know, if nothing else, you don't have to be a complete expert in every aspect that it takes to do something like this. All you have to do is be willing to stop when you don't know something, right? Ask questions. Google is amazing these days. You know, this may not have been possible for me to do, you know, 15, 20 years ago simply because... You know, it had been tough to find all the answers to all the questions that I had, you know, redoing this thing. So, glad that I did it, even though it did take me away from some of the things that I thoroughly enjoy, like machining. Um, you know, I wouldn't have this had I not, you know, went on, on that tangent. But now that this is pretty much done, I'm going to get back on the dual milling machine. That's kind of my plan anyway. Let's get back on it and get it together and get back to some of the machining and stuff that I really enjoy. Uh, I'm not necessarily an automotive builder, uh, but, uh, you know, it happened. So it's a bit weird, actually. It feels a bit weird to say that I'm done with this project. It has consumed my life, basically, both in my dreams and in every waking moment for the last year. This pickup truck, you know, what's my next step? What do I have to do to achieve this? What do I have to research to, uh, you know, make whatever happen, happen? And now that I'm done... With all of that, basically, I can just enjoy it. So it's a beautiful fall day. I think me and Elizabeth are gonna load up, maybe you know, hit some of these country roads. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, much appreciated. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.